Good morning, Wayfram from Den Haag. Uh, my name is Ashley, this is my husband Josh and our friend Laura. <laughs> we sold everything we had to travel the world and now we want to share with you the way away. So be sure to subscribe down below, hit that little bell and uh, follow the rest of our adventures. Let's visit Den Haag or The Hague. We took an hour train ride outside of Amsterdam and now we are in the heck. Or you can say it like the locals and do the heck. <laughs> we have a tour guide to start off our day and so many fun things um, planned for today. I'm really looking forward to it. And actually, the heck is um, a city on the beach, so we get to see the beach. This actually, afternoon. we just learned it's not a city. It's officially a village still because <laughs> of like some weird old documents. They never got the rights to actually call this a city because I guess it was there's some kind of documents back in the day and so this is the largest village in all of Europe. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Our first stop was at the Royal Palace and I had to say it was a really funny little experience because as it turns out, the Netherlands was originally, or at least for a long time, a republic. And only about 200 or so years ago, after Napoleon left the area, uh, did the family of Orange declare themselves as royalty, king and queen, and from then on they've had a royal family. But before that, there was no royal family here. They have a parliament, they're in the EU, and the royal family is sort of a figurehead. But um, that's about it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's right here on the shopping street too. The royal palace is just on the high street. Charles is bigger than Interestingly, we learned that The Hague is one of the few places in the Netherlands above sea level, or rather at sea level. You can see the roads are a bit twisting and winding because it turns out that this village was built on old sand dunes, and so the roads and the paths just sort of follow the natural progression of the low bits between the high hills of the sand dunes. So this area, the village, The Hague, was built on sand dunes. Dutch neo classicism, as you can see here, it looks a little bit like a Greek temple with all the pillars around it, crystal roof on top of it, so, and it's the only one in the Netherlands, so therefore UNESCO protected. Bonbon from the Hague. Mm. So he would be in his carriage just and eating And just his eating his coffee. coffee. So look at me, so look fancy. at me. This is a bonbon. He told us a whole story about this man who wanted to drink his coffee in his carriage, couldn't, um, had some thick coffee that kind of made something like this, and then he figured he could eat his coffee instead of trying to drink it while in a carriage. So now I'm going to try it. Oh, it's, it's hard. hard, but good. So this is fashioned after coffee with caramelized sugar. Yeah. over and now we are gonna go to lunch but after that we still have some more things to do we're going to a really cool place for lunch that is got a very interesting concept they rescue food called in stock. We are getting lunch here and we're super excited about it because they take fruits, vegetables, different foods um, that are not expired but pa maybe past an expiration date or with the vegetables they've grown a little strangely or the ugly just different stuff. things yeah that it's they wouldn't edible. use in other places but that it's still edible they can make amazing meals from it and that's their whole goal is to show people that those items are still 
usable to actually eat. And mm -hmm. so that's what we're gonna do. I guess otherwise a third of all production of that sort of food is just wasted, yeah. it's thrown out. 30% of the food worldwide that's in production doesn't actually get to your plate. Just because it's ugly looking, yeah. basically. It's, that's crazy. All right, so we're gonna so eat some food. ugly food today. <laughs> looking forward to it. We're getting the chef special, so I think he's putting together a platter for us of different items. Uh, on the platter, uh, from left to right, uh, some frittata, uh, some smoked mackerel uh, on the right side, uh, some fresh dough. Uh, in English, it's, it's like, like French toast. It's turn around fish. That's how it is. Uh, some caramelized banana and a uh, compote. In addition to rescuing food, this place rescues beer, in a way. So they rescue food and they make beer from the food. The first one made from potatoes, the second made from fermented bread. This is all rescued food as well. That one's really good. It's supposed to be like a really light IPA. And then the bread one. The smell and the head on that one is really crisp. I'm surprised, I think I like the bread beer better. I really expected it to be a lot heavier, but they're both really light and delicious. How's your ugly food? <laughs> Delicious. Yeah? Yeah. There's a frittata here with like real big chunks of um, vegetables in it. It's delicious. Ashley's reminiscing because Laura just brought up that we used to save food in our little community yeah. group that we hung out in in Los Angeles. We have a history of saving food. Yeah. <laughs> and the best thing is, is this platter, this chef's special, yeah. is only 10 euro. 10 euro for all of these things and you get to taste all these different items. I think that's such a great deal and something that I would come back in order for sure. Yeah, for sure. Did you have a favorite, Laura, out of everything on the plate? The French toast is really <laughs> good. It's really good. Lunch is over and we are walking down what we believe to be Europe's first boulevard to head to the Escher Museum. So the Champs-Élysées was modeled after this as well as a uh, boulevard in Germany. This boulevard here is from the medieval times where they classed up the neighborhood by disallowing pigs to wallow free in the streets. This place was uh, used to like parade yourself around. Like, look at me, I'm dressed very well. I can ride in a carriage and drink coffee or tea or whatever the case may be, dressed to the nines. And uh, people used to do that. And now it's used as just sort of a a nice little green space in a city. If you watch our Instagram, you will have seen a story of, a, of Laura and I skipping down this boulevard that we were just on. Turns out the boulevard is covered in seashells because The Hague is built by the sea and uh, is just sort of a sea town. I've already experienced a little bit of the sea. We're gonna go see the Escher Museum now, but later we will go to the sea and check it out ourselves. I also wanted to say how much I am loving having our gig sky and our phones because we're able to upload Insta stories immediately. So when you guys get them, we literally have just done that. Whereas before I had to save it on my phone, try to remember later on the day to upload it. But right now we can upload Instagrams, Instagram stories, right away because we have data. So if you're interested in Gig Sky, it's amazing to be able to have data and have Wi-Fi while you're traveling. Check out the link that we have below. We're working with them and so far we're loving it. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> So the Escher Museum is housed in yet another mansion here in The Hague. This one has significance to the royal family. I believe the queen lay here invalid and perhaps died here. Uh, I was asked if I could sense her ghost here. I cannot. This museum is actually really cool and the girls were remarking they didn't realize how cute Escher was. So if, in case you weren't a fan of his art, perhaps you can appreciate his good looks. Look up Escher online. Pretty good looking guy, I gotta say. They were saying he's the original hipster with the beard and the pompadour. Looking pretty good. <laughs> That's so funny. Lisa, look at how introspective he is. He probably has a very sensitive soul. Yeah, but Gosh. for all the ladies out there, um, he's, he's very dead by now, so it's not available. <laughs> Bummer. Ah oh, yes, very pensive. He was a handsome guy.
Escher's style of art is very different from many of the people in his time. He decided to make something like a stamp. So he took wood and he carved the drawing that he would draw first, then he would carve it into wood and then it would create a stamp and then he would have his art from that stamp, which is really, really neat. They have the wood carvings right here where you can see and it's not carved into rubber. Like all this stuff was carved into wood and he would use it and then stamp it on the paper. It's really neat. learning about the artist and how he did his art is so cool like um, I think I said that all his art was done in wood but it wasn't I learned all the different ways that he did his art and how he changed throughout the years it was super cool now we are at the beach we just took a little tram and I can't wait because we're gonna do something super awesome I did want to tell you guys it is only nine euro to get into that museum so if you come here definitely check it out One of the cool things about this pier specifically is around 2013 it laid unoccupied for about a year and they were thinking about tearing it down and we met the guy who's helping run this now and he explained to us that they kind of saved it in a way. So in 2014 they opened it up to the public and they installed a bunch of these restaurants and shops and they put the Ferris wheel on just about a year ago and it's attracting people. So for the next five years they're going to be drawing out plans to completely redo this pier. Eventually they are going to tear down this old one, but they're going to replace it with a new state-of-the-art pier that's sort of rebuilding this icon for The Hague. This is what it's like out here with sun. This is the first time we've seen really good sun this whole time, and it's gorgeous. It's lit up. We got stuff flying in my face because of the wind. As you can see, it is beautiful here. And the sun is actually going down, so this is this is really nice. I'm loving it. I love being by the beach. It's so nice. Every time I go to the beach, it reminds me how much I have to be by water when I pick somewhere to live. When she finally picks a place to stay for yeah. more than a week. It has to be by water because yeah. I just love it. And the sunshine feels so nice on my face. Yeah, it does. But I loved being on the Ferris wheel. It was so fun. Actually, yeah. every time we went around, I was like, again, again. again. But I think we did it like six times yeah, around. Sure. It was Awesome. And that is actually nine euros per person too, so just so you guys Again, know, not a bad price. Visit. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead to dinner now. I think we're gonna get some gin drinks, which is very popular over in Europe at the moment. And then we're gonna have some dinner as well. Oh, and there goes the sun. There goes the sun. <laughs> That's it. That's the sun. That's all. It's gone.
We've come now to a restaurant called Jamie Bennett here in The Hague. And to start things off with, we got some drinks. Now, gin, as you may know, is very popular here in the Netherlands. It's very popular all over Europe. But gin started here in the Netherlands. It's called Ginevere, or Ginevier, I can't quite say because I don't speak Dutch. But it is a, a word that means juniper. If you don't know, juniper is a strong flavor in gin. I believe it's also used in the making of gin. And while we're here in The Hague, I have a local gin for a gin martini. It's called Hermit, and it's supposedly you can taste the sea in it because it's made here on the coast by the sea. If you like gin, if you like martinis, that's really good. Thank you. We ordered uh, how many plates? Seven plates? Eight. Eight plates, and this is how big these ones are. Oh my gosh. We have a big dinner coming. <laughs> Alright, round two has made it to our table. What is this, Ash? This is salt and pepper squid. I'm really excited about it. Actually, I ordered both these things. And then we have crab cakes here with a nice little chili sauce. It looks delicious. Oh my gosh, it's so Whoa, that was amazing. That was delicious and the whole day was fantastic. So thank you to This Is The Hague and Visit Holland for that amazing experience. If you only had 24 hours in The Hague, I think this is probably the way to do it. Yeah, I loved the museum. I loved the restaurants we went to. It all just worked out perfectly. Yeah, and there's a lot of, there's a lot more museums that we had no time yeah, yeah. to go to. So you can pick and choose. You know, we went to um, the Escher Museum, but there's a lot of other different museums depending on your tastes. Yeah. Actually, the girl with the pearl earring is here in a museum, so you can go and see that painting if you want. You just have to uh -huh. come to the heck. Uh, Laura, what was your favorite part of the day? I think my favorite part of the day was, um, well, the food was fantastic. Both restaurants we went to were amazing. Yeah. Um, but honestly, being at the pier and seeing the sun come out was uh, really beautiful. It was kind of magical. Yeah, a glimpse of the sunset. <laughs> yeah. For like 15 minutes yeah. and it just yeah. came out. Yeah. yeah, so if you're here, especially on a sunny day, the, the beach might be perfect for you. Yep. So I think we're going to head home. We're going to catch the train now and there's nothing more to the night. We're just going to pass out at this point. Yep. Uh, so Wayfam, I hope we encouraged you to come get out there and travel today. Come to The Hague. Mm -hmm. We had an amazing time. If you only have one day or if you're in Amsterdam, and you want to come visit The Hague, mm -hmm. I can highly recommend it. We'll see you in the next video. Good night. Ciao! Bye.